Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, my tray overfloweth with knives, and that's a good thing. And where to start, you know, because I got all these knives and I showed them just a quick view on them, and then I wanted to do an in depth, you know, look at different knives, the ones that I had in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, one of the things that I just started using right away, it's not even on this, in this picture here, is this little neck knife. Now, as you can see, I've changed up. It had a big looped cord, pretty long. I changed it up because um, I was actually going to wear this. And I found a way of opening and closing it, you know, like you grab the sheath and you, you know, push your thumb kind of like on that and pull it. You can open it better. And this prevents you from breaking your neck. And with use, you know, just doing like this. I was doing this a bunch. Just getting used to how to open and close it. Now, normally I don't... I've had a neck knife more than one before. And um, there are some advantages and disadvantages to a neck knife. And we'll go over that, you know, right now. Um, one of them is... They're kind of annoying. You know, I wore dog tags, and I was in the military for six years, so once I got out of the military, I liked a lot of things. You know, I wore my fatigues, and I kept a lot of different stuff like that, but uh, the dog tags I stopped wearing, you know, because if you don't have to, then you don't want to. It does have the, uh, a neck knife has, this is one of the advantages it has. If you've got a neck knife on you, then you can wear a neck knife naked. I mean, in the shower, you can have a knife on you. Don't ask me how I know this. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it has that advantage. But if you're wearing it outside, outside your shirt, uh, it's going to be right there, about, you know, stomach level. And it's not too heavy. and You know, it's not too ob obtrusive about that. But if you turn one way this thing's gonna slide you know there's nothing securing it gravity you know it's gonna roll off your fat belly or whatever and bam it's not gonna go anywhere because it's still connected to it but you're like uh something you know something's hanging from my neck and when you're walking also if you run it's gonna be even more pronounced because things gonna go banga 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 and even if you uh put it under your shirt uh if you run you're gonna get you're gonna notice that you've got this thing on you like I said, it does have the advantage of you always have a knife with you. And it's probably carrying in a spot that, you know, you don't normally carry a knife. See, I'm not grabbing that one, right? Um, but I like this one. It's cool. It's it's in that stonework pattern where this is a, supposed to be fiery red jasper. And then mother of pearl. And then turquoise. And then abalone. I think the abalone is real. And the mother of pearl, maybe. But I believe it's synthetic. Most of this stuff is synthetic. <clears throat> but if it's done right, synthetic is all right. And of course we have the... I've decided that this is my favorite <clears throat> Rough Rider horseshoe type tang stamp. It's not perfect, but then, you know, what is? But we have everything... That I like in there. It, it's not too, you know, obtrusive or anything. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Sort of. And it always doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's so small it doesn't always come out in high relief and everything. But we see what we want to see. Our cowboy with his rifle on a horse on known or unknown medications. But he's, he's having a good time it looks like. Tested sharp. And then the horseshoe. And the test is sharp is done in a way that if you look a horseshoe, it usually has holes right there for nails. You know, like rectangular nails to go in there. So that just like blends in perfectly. And they didn't have to do all that, you know, but they did. And the only thing that's missing is then the Rough Rider itself is just in script, you know. It's just a stamp. Get it to focus. That's about as focused as it's going to get, it looks like. But yeah, it's done well. And, you know, it's made by hand. 
and you're using, see this is natural materials, you're going to have imperfections and stuff, but I mean it's all smooth and nice, and full tang, you know, it's one solid piece, pretty sharp, stainless steel, I've tested this 440 and it's really, <laughs> it doesn't want to get, you look at some corrosion resistant charts and 440A and 440C and on some of these charts like I think um, Neves Knives was having a live the other day and he was just going through Blade Matrix uh, list of different steels and properties and it was listing the corrosion resistance of different things and it was giving it numbers and the way it rated stainless steel you would make it think that like god man that's that stuff's just gonna rust if with a blink of an eye but this uh stainless won't rust anyway i don't want to get too deep into that but it's taken a lot it's been like vinegar and salt water you know 24 hours and, and not rusting sometimes they'll get like a, a thing but it'll just wipe right off it'll be like it was trying to try i'm not saying stainless steel won't rust it's just, you got to put it through a lot, which is good when you're wearing a neck knife. See, we got back to a neck knife because uh, the Kydex sheath, you know, is plastic, basically, so it's not going to get wet or get messed by wet. This is coated, probably stainless steel, but I haven't, I haven't worn this one in a shower. Um, the only thing is, is paracord, it would get wet, damp a little bit. Now... What does a neck knife, um, what, what would it replace, you know, normally? Well, one of the things that I use a lot is, uh, this is like a Spyderco bird. This is a, a bird, actually, but it's equivalent to the dragonfly. And this is very useful size. It's got more, it's, it's got, let's see if we fold it up. It's got more... It's about the same size as this whole neck knife apparatus, but it's got a clip on it. So you can use it. You can use it one-handed. You don't break your neck when you're doing it. Uh, you are limited to it's got a clip to something. You don't have to have a belt, but it's got a clip to something or be in a pocket. You know, you can have a belt or a pocket for one of these, but pretty easy open one-handed. I like this a lot. You don't see me reviewing it or talking about it much, you know, because it's made out of 8CR13, you know, which a lot of people poo-poo, but I'm not worried about that. But it's, you know, it's not the best stainless steel in the world. I think somehow China got scratched off there. I don't know how that happened. Wear and tear, I guess. But yeah, this is right here, Bird, 8CR13 MOV. Sharp as hell, man. Does a lot of cutting. Um, this one's 440A. I haven't done a lot of cutting with it. I cut some boxes and stuff like that. And, uh, like I said, just carry it around. Now, another traditional knife that might take its place, this one has no pocket clip or anything. It's just this little cub, you know. It's small, but, man, I use it for a lot, and it, and it cuts. <laughs> I've got the scars to prove it. Um, thumb biter, yeah. So... Yeah, I like these other ones, and I use them a lot. I, I, this was just more just to get it because it was available, and I'm not, I, I'm not even trying to completely pursue the. Here's another part of the stonework collection. You know, this is the one of the first stoneworks I got, and the first. It's a, actually a baby. It's a baby sunfish or a, a baby elephant toe or whatever, but it's it's smaller, and I had the misconception that. All elephant toes and all stuff were, were this small. And what really threw me off on this one was the spring on this one is a thumb breaker already. I can feel it. It's like I'm being tortured and they're trying to pull my thumbnail off with a pair of pliers. It's pulling on the tendons. I can feel it right there just to try to get that open. <coughs> Two strikes. You're small and you're trying to kill me. You know, why am I carrying this fat little heavy thing? I'm not, you know. But it is a nice looking knife, you know. They got these little. So that's, that's just part of the stoneworks. I think I got another 
one or two of them. You know, if I see them, I get them, but I, I don't go out of my way to get them to complete it. It's not like, oh, I gotta have it. But if you were trying to collect the Stoneworth collection, this one is usually hard to find. Um, because Smoky Mountain Knife Works is usually like my main reference source. So they're the owner of the brand. They stock it. Sometimes they get restocks on things that they sold out. That's the big issue, though. You know, like if they got things that don't sell much, they may keep this, you know, something like this in there forever. And always have it available at a price. <clears throat> but once they sell out, out of them, then you're forced to go to some other dealer, you know. And I didn't know a whole lot of dealers. I still don't. But I found out about this Blade Matrix. So anyway, this is a long-winded um, video already about a little knife. Um, but they are useful. I, I like the shape. Like I said, this little fixed. You're only getting about an inch. Inch and a quarter of cutting space. Let's push these guys off. All right, off you go. Move out of the way. We got to do some measurements here. We got to get a weight on the knife. Yeah, you know, it's with the paracord, but this is kind of like... This will give you an estimate of how much thing weighs roughly without being too rough All right ounces so it's like an ounce and a half i'm trying to get without the paracord balance it out roughly ounce and a half modage we need to go to grammage 40 grams roughly the knife itself and if you were to include the chain and all that other weight Look, we've lost point something of a gram. We'll tear it up. All right, so we'll put all the chain in there. So it goes up to 54 grams or almost two ounces, 1.9, with all the gadgets in there. So it's not bad. <clears throat> Let's get the little stinking ruler. The overall package is about three and a half inches. Not including lanyard. <clears throat> now, it says you've got about an inch and a quarter of cutting edge. But because it rolls up a little bit and that doesn't count on a ruler, you might get maybe an inch and a half out of it. It's got a nice little sharpening choil. It's got a nice thumb rest. Jimping. The jimming is effective, but not, um, not like tear your, but it's deep. It's good enough that you can rest your thumb on it. And it is, even for me, it's a two-finger knife, you know. Some things are two-finger knives. Like I said, this, you can get a full grip on it. You can get up close, but I might get four fingers on this knife. It takes up the same space. This one costs more. This was about $26. This one was only $10, but that's an unusual price to find them. But I could see you easily paying more than than more than one of these brand new for one of these used on the secondary market. If you can find them. Like I said, you can say, I'm willing to pay any price for it. Just, want to, just put one up there. Nope. Doesn't happen. You don't see it. So there you go. I hope you found that informative. Um... It is a useful carry operation op, option, and um, if if you like annoying, you know, things, some things are annoying, and you don't tolerate them, and other things are annoying, and you find them useful. This I would find on special occasions, like you go camping, or you'd probably be the most popular person in your cell block if you're carrying this. Like, man, not only is he carrying a prison shank but look at that he put some time and effort into it where'd you get the stuff from materials well you remember that red jello <laughs> and that blueberry pie and that what was supposed to be lobster that we had i saved all those materials the dixie spoons that we ate them with yeah. just being creative i got time i got nothing but time on my hand judge says at least another 20 years no possibility of parole. So there you go. That's my 
take on neck knives. It is, you know, if you get something new, don't just judge it instantly. Like, God, Jesus, this knife is so dangerous. By the time I pull it apart, I've, how many calories have I expended? It's a survival thing, you know. Burning 200 calories trying to get you out of the sheet. Uh, I sliced my wrist open. I'm bleeding all over the place. Now I got an infection. Thank you. Thank you, knife, for being there when I needed you. Help me out in this survival situation. There you go. I've rambled on too long. And the men with the rubber suits are coming to knock on the door. So I'm going to have to abalone my way out of here. Hope you found that enjoyable. I'll list the model number on it and any official specifications I can find on it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.